Hello, here's a screencast for section 5.8 to 5.11. 5.8 is on reaction mechanism and rate law. And the learning objective is identify the rate law for a reaction from a mechanism in which the first step is rate limiting. So the essential knowledge, um, first of all, I'll start here, the rate determining step. So the rate determining step is going to be the slowest step in the mechanism, and it's just listed over here. So we, we just look at that one right here. So this section, we're just looking at the, the first step being the slow step. And to get the rate law, uh, we just look at the, the reactants in the slow step. And we just go by the stoichiometry, so you go by the coefficients for each of these reactants. So in this example, the rate law is just going to be rate equals K H2 and that has a coefficient of 1 so it'll be of the first order and same thing with ICL. Now when you write out rate laws from mechanisms um, it's important you know that a catalyst can be in a rate law equation but you'll see in the next slide that uh, an intermediate cannot, so we have to substitute those out. Okay, so section 5.9 is on steady state approximation. And what steady state approximation means, it's pretty much the same thing as the last section. You're writing a, a rate law from the mechanism. The only difference here is uh, now instead of the first step being the slow step, it's going to be the second or third, but it's not going to be the first. So the learning objective is identify the rate law for a reaction from a mechanism in which the first step is not rate limiting. So it's essentially the same concept as, as 5.8. So we get the rate law from a step other than the first. And in this case, um, the, the thing we have to look out for here is if there's an intermediate in the slow step, we have to we have to substitute that out. So in this case, we have the slow step is right here. This is the same mechanism as the previous slide. I just switched fast and slow. So here you have the the reactants from the slow step. They both have coefficients of one. So when you write out the rate law from that, it would look like this: rate equals k. HI first order ICL first order. Okay, but now the, the problem here is HI is an intermediate. It's a product in the first step and it's a reactant in the second step. So intermediates cannot be in a rate law expression. So what we have to do is you, you look and see, well, where does the intermediate come from? It comes from this first step, which is fast, and we're going to substitute in the reactants from the step that produce the intermediate into the rate law equation. So it's going to be the, the concentration of H2 and the concentration of ICL. We'll substitute those in for the concentration of HI. So when we substitute that in and rewrite the rate law equation, so we rate equals K, you keep that part the same. Um, when we substitute out HI for these two, now we end up having two ICLs. So now ICL is going to be to the second order. And you still have, or, or you now have H2 to the first order. So we have to substitute out intermediates in, in this situation. The next section is 5.10, multi-step reaction energy profile. The learning objective, represent the activation energy and overall energy change in a multi-step reaction with the reaction energy profile. All right, so we have the energy graph again. So um, similar to the one that we saw before, you have reactants, you have products, but now this is showing a two-step mechanism. So the first um, hill, is going to be the activation energy for the first step. So we can draw that in right here. So the distance from the reactants to the top of that first hill, 
that's going to be your activation energy for step one in the mechanism. The activation energy for the second step is going to be from this middle section. That's where the intermediate is formed. It's going to be from the height of where you have the intermediate to the top of the second hill. And this is going to be your activation energy for step two in the mechanism. So this is showing a two-step mechanism, what that uh, energy profile looks like. The overall energy is still going to be the same as before. It's going to be the distance between reactants and products. So if we extend this out, the overall energy change is still going to be the difference between those two positions. All right, and then the last section for Unit 5 is on catalysis. Um, so the learning objective is explain the relationship between the effect of a catalyst on a reaction and changes in the reaction mechanism. So we've talked about catalysts in, in terms of the uh, uh, reaction mechanisms, how you identify them there. But in this section, it talks about uh, um, you want to know the catalyst function and just the basics of that. Um, a catalyst, it's something that speeds up a chemical reaction. And it does that. Uh, they, there's lots of different ways that they work. But one common one is it'll line up, um, combine with the reactants and just give them a favorable orientation. So it creates a lower energy pathway to get from reactants to products. And then uh, if you're looking at it in terms of the energy profile, um, this is kind of the, I think is kind of the real the key thing to know for a catalyst. It gives you a lower activation, a lower activation energy. So this would be an uncatalyzed reaction where you have that higher activation energy. If you add a catalyst, it just lowers that activation energy hill, and it makes it easier to get from reactants to products, and that speeds up the reaction. Um, one thing, another thing you want to know is the um, energy of the reactants and the energy of the products, and the difference between those doesn't change. It just lowers the activation energy hill. Another way to look at it, um, if you have a... Um, a speed distribution, like a Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution. Um, this line right here, that would be the, the activation energy for no catalyst. Um, if you add a catalyst, then the particles don't have to have as much energy to overcome that barrier. So you get a greater percentage of particles that can have an effective collision and turn into products. And that's all for Unit 5. Have a great day.